Hi guys and welcome back to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and I'm back here today with another whiskey review and it's another one that I'm very excited about. I know that I've been excited about a lot of them recently but that's kind of the pattern. I love whiskey, that's why I do this, so I'm going to be very excited about this. Whew. So this whiskey is a single malt from a distillery located in Fife. It's a new distillery although it's not kind of new-ish, I guess. I recently reviewed the Rasse, general release, the batch R01, I think it may be. Can't remember quite what, what the actual batch was. And this is kind of of a similar vein. It's a newish distillery, it's their first general release. I'm very excited to have it. This is one of what I believe to be 40,000 bottles of this batch. So just to reiterate what I've been saying on my written blog over at maltboxwhiskey.com, chill out about buying whiskey. Just chill out. It's a luxury. All right? It's a luxury. It's not a necessity. There's plenty of it out there. We can all enjoy it. We can all enjoy it together. Be nice to the people that make it. If you don't get a bottle, it's fine. Just move on. Live your life. So it's this. Lindor's. Single malt Scotch whiskey, and look at that bottle, isn't that pretty? So it's kind of like old school and art deco at the same time with all those ridges. Now, this is bottled at 46%. I believe it to be natural colour and non chill filter, but it doesn't tell you on the bottle, and it doesn't come in the box or anything that says it. It really just doesn't tell me on the bottle here. I had to look at whiskey base to tell me that it was non chill filtered and natural colour, so I'm going off that information. If the guys at Lindor's want to correct me on that and tell me it is chill filters and not natural colour, then please do. But I believe it to be non-chill filters and natural colour. Again, bottle at 46%. Cast types, we've got ex-bourbon, sherry and ex-wine barriques as well. Very, very pretty indeed. They did release a commemorative version of this as well that was limited to a smaller number of bottles that was a couple of quid more expensive. Which is an interesting approach because it kind of gives people that want to flip something and you know a way of flipping it, but it also the general release gives people like you and me that don't want to do that a chance to drink it, which is how it should be done. So kudos to Lindors for kind of finding a way around the people that want something that they might want to hold on to for a few years and something that people like me can just buy and open. This I purchased for around 45 quid, which again, a bit like the Rasse, is great to see a general release priced well. Not 80 quid, not 90 quid. Really, really affordable. Kudos. Now, I'm not pouring this. Do you know why? Because I poured this about half an hour ago, because this arrived this morning. I'm recording this on Thursday. I'm aiming to have this posted for general release on Sunday. And I opened it as soon as it came through the post box. Well, through the door, it wouldn't fit through the post box, at about 12 o'clock. I was in the middle of my working day, so I didn't have a snifter until I finished work at five. So I wanted to give this a chance to open up in the glass. Effectively, it's a second neck pour. So, colour of the whiskey there, nice light gold. Some lovely, lovely legs starting to form there that haven't even started travelling down the glass yet, which is a really interesting sign. On the nose. Full disclosure, this is probably the longest that I've sat down with it, by the way. This this hasn't been with me for 12 hours yet. It's gonna sound ridiculous, but it smells thick, it smells oily, it smells viscous. Loads of honey. Lovely kind of deep cola cubey coke kind of spiciness in there as well like herbaceous as well you could argue i'm not going to say the smoke in there because i believe this to be unpeated but there is a nice kind of depth to it there it's a nice sort of like again going back to that herbaceous quality that i mentioned there's also some stem ginger if you can hear something in the background, by the way, that's my cat having some snacks, so I do apologise. That will be Winston chowing down on some food. 
But I can't envy him that, you know, I can't begrudge him that. You fill your boots, mate. Again, honey, lovely kind of oil in a suit. And when I talk about oil, I'm talking maybe some, some sort of like rapeseed or extra virgin in there. It does have a very oily quality to it. Very, very nice. Very nice. Mm. On the palette. Mm. Lovely mouthfeel, great texture, again oily, spice is back, we've got some cinnamon, a bit of nutmeg, again there's that Coca-Cola kind of thing going on that I really like, it's something that I get from Bimba, quite interestingly enough, I do get sort of like a Cola QB and Coca-Cola vibe from Bimba. Going into the, into the finish, it's going off a little bit but possibly there's some of that wine influence more on the finish than anywhere else. It's sort of like red fruit, red berries. We've got some of that sherry in there as well. It's getting a little bit nutty. Some sort of raisin in there. All right, bud. It's been a while since Winston's made an appearance, so if you can see him just out shot, then... Hiya, Winston. How you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, just chilling. Just chilling. Really, really nice, really kind of a nice amalgamation of cast types I think is probably the way I describe it. A bit like the Rasse. It seems to work really well together. One of the reasons that I described Lindor's as a newish distillery at the start is because it has a lot of history and a massive connection to the Scotch whisky industry and Scotch whisky as a whole because it is one of the places that's first recorded to have some sort of connection to the production of whiskey way back when, about four or five hundred years ago or something, which is really cool. On the nose, just as I went back there, there's kind of a kind of a Christmas cakey note going on which is something that you do associate with sherry matured whiskey and it's been used to death for, for distillers like Glen Farkless but what I'd say is it's pre-cake for me or pre-pudding it's the, it's oh my god it's like the my mum is a master oh god I probably shouldn't say that she loves baking right she loves baking she bakes a lot and one of her specialties is fruit cake and Christmas cake. And that smells like that cake mix, the raw Christmas cake mix. It's got the brown sugar in there. It's got it's got the sort of like the raisins. It's got a little a little hint of the, the brandy that's been in the back of their cupboard for about 30 years. Because they don't really drink it, they just use it in cake. It's got all that kind of going on. It's like this lovely wet, sort of like nice really nice kind of like aromas cake mix um, and then it kind of carries over into the palate where you've got that nuttiness you've got the raisin you've got the lovely spices in there and the texture again going back to the texture it's lovely it's fantastic and I'm really really happy I'm really happy that the last couple of reviews that I've done where I've, I've looked at the Lindors and I've looked at the Rasse this is the future of Scotch whiskey, and I'm really, really glad that it's in hands like this because they're doing a great job with young spirit. They both belie their age, and I wouldn't have thought this was as young as he was. It's a no age statement. I believe it to be, again, a bit like the Rasse, really, quite young, between three and five years old. It's, it's lovely, it's fantastic. It's another example of quality ingredients, quality, te uh, quality techniques, Quality casks, quality presentation. What's not to like? It's great. It's great. Kudos to the guys at Lindor's. 
it takes a lot of guts to, to start any distillery. It takes a lot of money, a lot of investment, a lot of convincing people that you know what you're doing, that you're going to make returns on that, that investment, and also impress people along the way. We can all be critical of stuff. We can all say that, you know, this whiskey is good, this whis whiskey is bad. But ultimately, there's a lot of hard work and a lot of love that goes into making whiskey, and sometimes we've just got to appreciate that. And Lindor's is no exception. That is a lovely drop. So kudos, guys. Well done. Well done. So on that note, guys, I'm going to box it off. Thanks for watching. If you've not already, check me out on Twitter at Maltbox, Instagram at Maltbox Whiskey, and I've also got the written blog over at MaltboxWhiskey.com. Cheers. See you soon.